welcome Survivor Veterans of State of Decay. This is your boy Congrex is Prime coming at you with a three things you will see in State of Decay 3. Now, how did I come about this information? What happened, Prime? Well, I'm going to tell you guys the journey I went through to get this information for you guys fresh off the celestial planes. See, what happened was I unlocked my seven chakras. I visited my spirit guide. It took me to the astral plane. In the astral plane, I was able to fold space and go right into the fifth dimension. Once I, I grabbed all the knowledge I needed, I came back to the present, right? I built a flux capacitor. Once I built a flux capacitor, I was able to time travel to the future to verify what I saw in the fifth dimension. And that's when I saw everything. I saw the launch of State of the K3. Great Scott. I'm joking, my dudes. That's not what happened. Now, I want to cover a subject here because the uh, the State of the K2 community, I would say the State of the K period community, is uh, there's a lot of rumors floating around about certain things. And I want to tell you guys that I know for a fact there are going to be three things that are going to have to be in State of the K3. And those three, three things I'm going to get into right now. So the third thing that I know for a fact that we're going to see in State of the K3 is going to be beards. That's right. We're going to see every kind of beard you can think of from Abraham Lincoln's beard to uh, Viking beards to Hunter beards to Every single beer you can think of is going to be in State of the K3. How do I know this, guys? How do I know this? I will cite the information for you guys at the end of the video. You just have to hang in there for me. I, I assure you that all these things are legit because it has something to do with how Undead Labs operates. See, Undead Labs operates under the stigma that they listen to their community members, right? And if we, as a community in whole, want something... It is in their best interest to give us what we want because it's only going to promote their game. It's only going to give their game longevity. Now, all these things that I'm mentioning are only going to be applicable to State of Decay 3. So let's move on to the next thing. The second thing that will be added for sure in State of Decay 3 is going to be re relationships my dudes a relationship mechanic will be installed instead of the k3 now how do i know this for sure well again the same thing as the first subject we talked about the second subject is just as important everybody in the community wants their characters to have a relationship rather that's a family oriented relationship rather it's a sibling relationship rather it's a sexual in nature relationship they want their characters or we all I'm going to include myself in this one. Our characters to connect in some way or shape or form. Now, if you guys have been paying attention, Update 26 came out and there were two particular quests that were there. One was a quest that you picked up from a random character that you pick up on the map in Trumbull Valley. He would turn out to be a police officer and his brother's also a police officer. So you go searching out for your, your brother because that's the way it happened to me. It was a brother. I'm not sure if there's actual a, a sister involved in this. Um, but the way my quest went out and played out was like a brother. I went and found my brother, my, my older brother. And my older brother had a girlfriend who was also a police officer. And then a detective, that is. And then you find her. And then there's like this weird, uh, you know, relationship that those two characters had. Now, what that quest fell short was that there was actually no bonus in holding, let's say, those three characters together or those two characters together. Um, that's where it fell short. But you see, that's kind of like a starting ground. I saw it right away. I was like, oh, okay. They're trying to implement quest or quest lines with an actual relationship and see how we react to it. See, that was the, I think that's the groundwork towards, let's say, State of the K3. The second mission that's there is the actual Mickey Wilkerson and Lily Ritter's mission, where it's part of his redemption arc. He finds her medicine, he sends her medicine, and then she goes from not wanting to talk to him to kind of talking to him. And again, it's another 
uh, way for the game devs to try to introduce some kind of emotional uh, connection in State of Decay 2. But I think we're going to see more and more of those type of missions and the, the, that type of quest line and that kind of, you know, connections being established in State of the K3 for sure. Because that's what the community wants and I'm going to cite it right now. See, all of this information is available to you in the State of the K2 website itself. You go to Wishlist and you're going to see that people have been voting and wanting these particular mechanics in State of the K2. Now, again, I don't think it's ever going to be possible for them to do such a thing at, to that grand scale. But I'm pretty sure that it's high on the priority list for State of the K3. Because, again, those are one of the top things that you will see on that wish list are relationships. The other thing that you're going to see the most is people wanting cosmetic uh, value like beards and hairstyles. And being able to cosmically, cosmetically change the way their characters look. So I expect that Undead Labs being Undead Labs, and they are for the community, by the community, that they will implement those two mechanics for sure in State of the K3. Now, I want to take you guys on a journey. I want to you, for you guys to know that this next thing is going to be a very controversial topic. And it's going to be the third thing that I know for sure that's going to be in state of the K3. So, my dudes, it is now time for me to give you a choice. I want you guys to think long and hard what you're going to listen to next because I will free your mind if you allow me to do so. Now, how am I going to free your mind? Well, how, how about if I tell you a secret? Something that Undead Labs has done. But in order to do so, I want to first, you know, warn you guys. I want to give you a choice. You either could take the blue pill. The story ends. You hit the dislike button now. And you believe whatever you want to believe. Or you take the red pill. And you follow me down this deep rabbit hole. And we'll see how deep it really goes. Now, that is a... Really cool quote from The Matrix, guys, and that's one of my favorite movies, but I am digressing. Now that, that you know what I'm trying to go at, I want to talk about something that's uh, been rumored, and there's a lot of different things going around in the state of the K2 community, like I said previously in the beginning part of this video, and that is that state of the K3 will have Breakdown 3.0, and you're going to say, Wait a minute, where's 2.0? Where is State of the K2, let's say, their breakdown version? Well, again, I'm going to blow your mind and I'm going to explain to you guys what I mean about breakdown 3.0 right this moment. So, here it is, guys. Let's talk about breakdown 1.0, which is obviously in State of the K1. It was a DLC. It was a very famous DLC. It was something that held... Uh, State of the K1 relevant for many years, and it's one thing that the game developers are always uh, going back to. So when they designed State of the K2, what information do you think they used? It was the most valuable thing that there was in State of the K1. It wasn't actual the main story campaign. It wasn't Lifeline. It was actually Breakdown. So when they design, and this goes back to many, many years ago, if you guys go back and look at some of their old streams from State of the K2, um, and, it, and it, you can ask, even ask one of the game developers if you want themselves, because they've been quoted plenty of times saying this, that they mirrored State of the K2's mechanics with State of the K1 breakdown. So you're going to say, well, Prime, that's kind of far-fetched. My dudes, it really isn't, if you think about it. See, State of the K1 has a mechanic where you will reset your map, right? You use an RV, and with that RV, you'll get some quest. You, you, you'll be able to, here's the, here's the caveat here, you'll only be able to take a certain amount of characters with you to the next level. As you continue progressing the levels from level 1 to level 99, you will increase zombie density, and the, the difficulty of the game will, again, increase as you continue going. As you do so, there are some achievements you do. There are some hero characters you'll be able to unlock. 
so on and so on. So what are the nuances between State of Decay 2, uh, Breakdown 2.0, as I like to call it, and Breakdown 1.0, is that there are very big similarities. In State of Decay 2, you can reset your map by going to, when it first launched, going towards the end of the map and reaching one of those uh, uh, exit points and moving on to a different map where you could a reset all your content rather you want to reset that map that you're in and restart all over or b you go to a new map either way you're resetting the map and the mechanic was to make a phone call uh, a radio call on your level two communication uh center now nowadays that they took that that radio call away now you just have to have a, a level two communication center that is the mechanic for the RV. Now, the caveat here is the actual mechanic that when you beat the game, when you beat your legacy, you are only allowed to bring back three of your characters and whatever's in their inventory from your legacy pool. See, that's all intertwined with State of the K1 Breakdown. And then the biggest one here is, well, Prime, where's the level system? Where do, how does the game get harder? Well, here's the here's the the brilliant part of this this is uh this is how you guys have been uh put a veil around your eyes and then their labs have put your mind in a prison that you cannot not taste smell see or touch but it is there the prison is that every single day that you spend on state of decay two day by day your difficulty gradually increases it also increases by the rise of your influence. When you reach a certain amount of influence, which the last time it was stated by State of the K2 Game Devs last year was 4,000 influence across the board, and you reach a seven day threshold, right, as you get to day seven, then you're gonna start seeing more freaks, more pharaohs, more bloaters. The the, the uh, zombie population starts to increase as well and this is this is clear across the board on all difficulties now obviously in elite zone it's the most dramatic change but in all the other difficulties the longer you play the game and the more days that pass by and the more influence you acquire the more difficult the game gets and that is breakdown 2.0 so whenever you start hearing people wanting to say get a breakdown version of state of the cake the devs have already provided it for you and they made it even easier now with the difficulty sliders. You can reset whatever map you want as many times as you want by just flipping the difficulty sliders from, let's say, Leto to Green Zone back to Leto. You reset your whole map and you start all over again. You can reloot the map or you can leave it in Green Zone and loot it to your heart's content. You already have all the mechanics of breakdown. So, I mean, could they make a breakdown 2.0 for State of Decay 2? Sure, it'll be very easy for them to implement. All they have to add is the RV. But I doubt, I doubt very much that they're going to do all that because the game's already in breakdown mode. Whether you fail to see it or not, that's entirely up to you. So, what are the things that will change with State of Decay 3 is this, right? Undead Labs has a formula. I want you guys to memorize this formula and I want and I want you guys to call me on it when the time comes, right? Cuz I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. And the very first person that drops a comment down there and says, "Prime, you're absolutely wrong." Right? I'm willing to pay for one copy of State of the K3, but I'm going to hold you accountable. So if you can't afford a copy of State of the K3, don't put the bet on the table because then you're wasting my time. And what I'm going to do with that with that game that you buy me is I'm actually going to raffle it out to a community member that that wants to, you know, get the game. That's what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to keep it, obviously, because I will have my own version of State of the K3. But I want you guys to bet me that what I'm telling you is false. And we will see a repackaged, a repurposed version of Breakdown 2.0, which is State of the K2. You will see State of the K3. The formula is there. They're just going to repackage it, put it in a different box, put a different wrapping paper around it. And at the end of the day, we will be playing Breakdown 3.0. Anyway, guys, that's going to be the video. I want to thank you guys so much for all your support. I am getting dangerously close to 2,000 subscribers. If you guys don't mind smashing that like button right now, hooking your boy up. 
with uh with a subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my content as you guys know i will be throwing out even more state of the k2 content along with these style of videos news videos anything i get my hands on the state of the k2 state of the k3 related i will be putting on this channel stay tuned for things to come i also stream state of the k2 and other assorted games as well if you guys are interested smash that like button hit that subscribe Thank you guys so much for your support. Happy holidays. Light, love, and peace. Congrexes. Checking out.